but to bring allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There you go. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to have here is a, a CST a company's continuation from May 25th, 2021. Chag and Megan Pope of CST companies have requested an return use permit to allow outdoor storage on lot one, block two of the Tufts first edition development of this partial plan for a 32,425-foot space uh, office warehouse building on six acre lot. Uh, we'll have, we'll let the planner present. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, or the pro roll call. I'll take the roll call first. Chairman Ames. Here. Commissioner Jorgensen. Here. Commissioner Carroll. Here. Commissioner Schiller. Commissioner Beast. Here. Commissioner Hapala. Here. Commissioner Carlson. Here. Mayor Pilon. Here. City Planner Stockman. Here. Okay, the next thing we'll have is uh, uh, approved or uh, men tonight meeting agenda of June 22nd. Do we have a motion to? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting agenda. Commissioner Perrell made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Commissioner uh, Bias made the second. Uh, do we have any further discussion? Seeing none. I'll call for the vote. All, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Now we'll go on with what, what I read about uh, uh, Chad and Megan Tuck. Would the planner present what she has? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So Chad and Megan Tuck have submitted revised plans for the CST site up on St. Francis Boulevard on what will be new 204th Avenue. This zoning map shows the proposed location at the very northerly point of our industrial district on St. Francis Boulevard. You'll note that the 2040 land use plan is identical to the zoning map. Uh, also designated as light manufacturing uh, district in our comp plan. This is an aerial view of the area. It's on the Oak Grove border, abuts an existing neighborhood, and 30 acres in the front here against St. Francis Boulevard, as well as in 40 acres in the back. The wetlands have been delineated. Initially, uh, the TOF submitted a preliminary plat for this full parcel, and that was, public hearing was held last month, and that was moved forward to the City Council uh, meeting in July. What has happened now is we are looking at considering just the site plan approval for the CST site on the six acres. They will be constructing a portion of 204th Avenue as well as a stormwater pond as part of the site. So there's a drainage and utility easement on the property in this location right up against 47. That acts as somewhat of a buffer between the road and the proposed development. And then the detailed plans show how 204th will be constructed to the terminus of their lot line. And the drainage plans are indicating a stormwater pond in this location. So we had the public hearing last month for the outdoor storage request. So in the industrial district, the proposed office and warehouse use is a permitted use, but it's the outdoor storage of um, trucks and trailers that necessitate the interim use permit. 
So in this graphic, it's showing the parking of trucks along that south property line. Um, they are proposing screening fence along this front side and along the, actually the two street sides, 204th Avenue, as well as the St. Francis Boulevard side. The other sides will be six foot chain link with slats, uh, which is also in compliance with our zoning ordinance. So what would happen is if we move this forward tonight, um, the council would review the site development by itself. The plat would come at a later date. The city engineers, or excuse me, the applicant's engineer is talking about acquiring a temporary access permit to San Francis Boulevard. That would allow the city to issue a building permit for the structure. Uh, we would work with the applicants and the council to develop a, a mini um, development agreement to ensure that 204th Avenue and the stormwater pond are constructed to city standards and according to plans and that there is a financial guarantee for that. So we would work also with the city attorney on that. This was the uh, elevation that was presented last month. They've changed it slightly and they've removed this brown stripe as was commented on at the public hearing. This is the proposed uh, new look with just solid color sidewalls which kind of blend into the environment a little more, I think. And then they've got the higher quality uh, wood look and brick on the front office area with the wainscoat along the uh, two street sides. So the ordinance requires that not more than 50% of metal be exposed on an industrial building. So they have two options here. They presented this, this second schematic which shows the addition of a, additional brick to meet that 50% requirement. So in this scenario where they have a little They've got about seven feet, four inches of brick along the two street sides. That brings the um, non-metal, or metal rather, to 47% and the non-metal to 53%. Whereas in with a smaller uh, wainscot here, they're up at 61%. Now the ordinance does allow applicants to process a conditional use permit if they wish to deviate from the building material requirements um, and the burden is upon them to prove that they're meeting the intent of our ordinance and still maintaining a high level of quality and I wanted to share the um, yeah, Mr. Toff can hold up that metal metal panel It's an embossed. Like a, a metal circle. Yeah. I'll just walk. Next mm -hmm. It's an it's an insulated panel, which is so it's more of an insulated metal panel that looks like stucco. Higher it's grade metal. and a little thicker than a typical metal building. So they're not opposed to providing the additional brick. Um, they would have to process a conditional use permit, whether that would be um, at the council meeting or at another planning and zoning. I think they would rather just maybe move this forward, but we can chat a little bit more about that in a moment. But either way, they're willing to um, meet the requirements for materials. This is just a general floor plan showing that the majority of the buildings warehouse area. And some added pictures of how this stucco finish appears 
at their facility in Columbus, the city of Columbus. Um, very well, the same product here on the warehouse sides. The brick is a slightly different color, it'd be a darker brown on the proposed building. Here it's a little bit more of a tan. But this is an example of the approximate three foot Wayne's coat. This uh, plan is indicating the two sides where the 10 foot fence is proposed to on the two street sides. This is a revised landscape plan since last month uh, where they added the requested screening of the employee parking area up front near the office area. The rest of the landscaping was deemed as adequate and met, meets ordinance requirements. Uh, in the report I talk about a lighting plan and that the there are a couple changes that were needed and they have since sum submitted this revised lighting plan. So in the report I talked about how on this east side the light was not meeting the 0.5 foot candle requirement and it was spilling over the lot line slightly and they have since revised this plan to be compliant so in this detail here I'm showing how they're 0.4 foot candles at the property line here and you can see by the graphic that none of this light from the two light poles on the southerly, southerly part of the site is is shining off site so everything is contained on site and in compliance with our ordinance uh, with this revised plan so you can disregard any comments in the um, well we might have to amend the findings to reflect that submission of the revised lighting plan but as it's shown here it does comply with our ordinance and I also would like to note that the uh, proposed lights are 3,000 Kelvin, which is um, the threshold at which the Dark Sky Club likes to base their um, determination. In other words, um, it's, it's an intensity of light, it's the color of the light, um, which is less obtrusive to your eyes and to wildlife. So the proposed lights do meet that dark sky requirement even though it's not part of our city ordinance. So our office is proposing or re recommending approval of the project. Uh, we can, there were a couple highlighted areas in the findings that we can discuss. If there are any questions, I'd be glad to entertain those at this time. Especially from the new members, we want you to have a thorough understanding of the project and as well as the process. So please feel free to ask away. Did you mention, uh, Dr. Uh, in the lighting plan, in the recommendations that that has changed? They have since submitted a revised lighting plan right here on the screen. So there are no um, changes. What I was wondering is I wanted to take a look at my findings because I probably stated in here that the lighting plan did have to be changed. And it, no longer does. Maybe 16. There, 17. The photometric lighting plan is updated to show no more than 0.5 foot candles at the property lines, and the plans will be subject to review and approval of the city planner. So we can we can strike 17 in our findings of fact because they have accomplished that. I had two highlights on the findings. The first is on page two. 
Um, I just wanted to chat a little bit about the number of trucks on site. We know that they have indicated a certain number of spots, but there's certainly room to park additional trucks. I just want to know what the Planning Commission's feeling is about that, and as well as the applicant, if you have any comments long-term, if um, you think you'll need additional truck parking, or if this is... That's a plenty for where we're at right now, for each growth. That's, that's all in with growth. That is with growth, okay. That is with growth. Okay. Do we need another? So we are at what, 36, it was, I think. 35. So if you want to limit it to the spaces indicated, if you want to, you know, there's certainly room for 40 trucks if you want to go up to 40, but they're saying that this is allowing them quite a bit of growth, so. This can always be changed. Well, they're going to be limited to the 35 trucks, um, unless they come back for an amended IUP, so that's what they'd be limited to. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mayor. Just to clarify, you keep saying trucks and the plan says trailers. Trailers. Trucks or trailers or a combination? Combination. Combination. You had said most of yours were uh, flatbeds? Mm -hmm. Three vans. How many uh, tractors? Truck and trailer? Yep. The only time you'll see them there a lot is they need maintenance. You know, something needs oil change or something breaks, they gotta come through there. And then they leave it there for get work done the next day. So is it advisable in my mind then to say truck trailer combinations? 35 combinations allowed on the property. Is the commission okay with that? I, I don't have no problem with it at all. It's, it's in the plans there, so. The only other highlighted item on findings was regarding the exterior building materials. I'll go back to this graphic. Well, again, I don't know if you want to see this view of their Columbus facility. So they are vertical panels. Appears like a stucco. And so the question is, do you want to go with the bottom sketch which has the more of the brick on the ends or the street sides rather that is in compliance with our zoning ordinance this would potentially be accepted but they would have to process a conditional use permit is there any thoughts on that it's absent good to see it. for me i can say it. Aesthetically, I like the looks of the less because it's what we have on Columbus. It turned out well. If it would go up further, it just looks a little bit funny. If you go back to it Columbus, just doesn't have the right ratio. If you go back to the Columbus building, like the outside picture with the door keep going, see how the door you'd be seven foot six, and you don't see buildings with a seven foot. Yeah, you'd be six. right with the um, like the be, windows on the garage door or something. So it'd be a high. It would be up here. Yeah. Just it would just aesthetically it would look. Different than most commercial buildings. And if you guys want it, I mean, we'll do it. Yeah, we're fine with it. But it, I just don't think it's going to look aesthetically like a Wayne's Club would look. And, and when these are higher grade panels, I know where you guys are going on the tin, you just don't want a tin 
Morton building. I totally get it. This is not that house or whatnot. This is in Morton building. So I'm open either way. I'll do whatever you, whatever you guys choose. I just don't think, you know, a typical door is about six foot, six foot five, I think it is. So it would be above a door, it would be your wainscot. Yeah. If that makes any sense. So it may look a little. The service door, not the door. The service door, the man door. So it may look a little funny on that. I've never seen a building like that. But if that's what you guys want, we'll do it. There's no question. Mr. Chair? Yes. I, I thought the same thing when I was uh, looking at the pictures that it actually looks better with the 61% metal. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Um, with the knowledge I have, yeah, I agree that going too high with the brick is going to look a little out of sorts. I was just wondering, I don't have the numbers in front of me, I can't do the numbers off the top of my head, but maybe a four foot wainscot instead of a three foot, it tends to make the doors look a little bit more, um, and it tends to give them a more of a, an attraction point. But the next question I had was then for the actual office space. I see, no, you had the right picture up. Oh, did I? Yeah. So I see the stone going up on the corners as well. On then on the picture that they submitted for the sixty-one percent stone front, um, I only see it coming up in just four locations. And I'm wondering if they're planning on doing it. Keep going. Yep. Planning on doing it in more locations. And then I see a stone column. Column. I'm just not that one. The one up above. Oh, here. Yep, so making that whole wainscot more of a four foot high kind of makes it a little bit more attractive because vehicles are going to be parking it, you know, next to it at some point here. So you will still get to see it. Um, but then is there more stone on that? And what is the material on that office section between the stone? This is the wood product. Yep, this is the, the, the dishy pots. Like oh, okay. So, what I'll tell you is aesthetically, when we did the building in Columbus, okay. we have the four, we have the corners, and yep. then the two in the middle yep. with the brick, and it yep. doesn't look great. You. When, you're, when you're there, it doesn't look great when you look at it. So that's okay. why this we went with the two corners okay. and the pillars. This, when it, when you put this, is that going so many. vertical or is that going horizontal? It's going like that? Yep. Okay. It looks, oh, well, we could do it either way. It goes like this. Sorry, I haven't pulled it wrong. Okay. It looks like a like a weathered wood. Yeah. Is what it ends up I'm just wondering what the we way they lines are going to go. We color before. Okay. And we wouldn't do that. We like it with that building with okay. the lighter brick. This he likes the darker brick, so we went with the lighter. And it still matches. This matches a little bit better with um, the stucco panels. Okay. So and that's. I think the four foot would be. I do nice. like the stucco panels. I do like the stucco panels. They look yeah. nice. Um, I'm just wondering if we can kind of, because your office space is your office, you want to draw attention to it. And I'm just wondering if we can add a little stone on there somewhere to draw attention to the main door. Um, not so much, you know, outside of that, but I know you've got the stone we pillars can, there. Have it if it comes in. Oh, Except okay. the time people work in the office. Um, our truck drivers all come in and we don't get a lot of foot traffic. We're not retailing or something like that. So okay. we're going for Okay. Yeah. And for anybody driving by. Yeah. So it would really be up to you guys. We're fairly open. That's right. Up top, they did a little bit different where they were doing shapes. Okay. Um, and they're not traditionally like that orange, but they're more of like a, a, rest like a cedar, cedar, rustic look. Okay. We could do the if you're looking for something for fancy, like yeah. poles in the front door right yep. there. Yeah. We could wrap that in cedar instead of do brick if you'd like something yeah. like that. So it's sort of oh, I like the brick. Oh, I do like the brick on all four sides. I don't know if that's what you're looking yep. for. I was just looking at it as a standpoint from, yes, you probably aren't going to be getting a lot of customers coming through the front door. I'm just looking at it from driving by, what's going to look nice. That is my background. So um, I was just wondering well, if... Well, thing I don't know is how high, if you do a four foot, which I'm fine. Because yep. that's what you guys want to do. I don't, you have the window. It is. The, you'll, wrap, you'll, you'll have to work around the window so it won't look normal at that point. Okay. Does that make any sense? Yep, that's okay. And that that I don't know I don't know where your windows sit with that so four. Maybe if you do three on the office and if you did four on the warehouse, okay. because they're taller, you could have a different mm -hmm. height on the two. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's really up to you guys if you guys like it. I just think the seven foot six would look funny all the way across the building mm -hmm. on that side. It wouldn't be a good flow for a building. And and we could just put it in there as to the bottom of the window so they match up so they have a nice uh, sill of that brick 
but that limestone sill, sorry, whoever that's me doing it, um, the limestone sill along there, and we could do four foot on the building or else just stay with a consistent one. Still stone, yes. And I can call Greg real quick, like he had other prior engagements uh, with his family, but I can see what the window height is from the ground to the lower window. If you'd like me to see that, I don't have a, and he can get it for me. We could say, we could put it right in there and say, hey, that's where the bottom of the window so it matches all the way across to this three foot five or four foot, whatever. You know, I'm open to whatever you guys want oh, I, do. okay. I might be able to figure it out here. Give me a second. I can't read plans. So. I, I hear you're a draft. I can. <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> I can. So what I was going to suggest actually was I do like the brick on the back side of the of the office separating the office from the shop area. I do like the pillar of brick going there, and I do like the pillars on the front. My suggestion was going to be just incorporate, if you were to stand, and this, this is all Pierce perspective, but if you were to be standing straight on with your post, draw a line straight back and on the wall have your stone go right behind that so it draws attention to the entrance itself. Gives you a little extra stone. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, I follow your face. Like it's okay. Let me... So you wanted to wrap up on the building? Yeah, on the building like, side, yes. So you want like how far, like you're talking the main entrance door? Yes. Yes. Straight behind the pillars. And then, yeah, then how, the, how wide do you want to go up and down? The same as the pillars. Okay. Same as the edge of the pillars. So outside the pillar, outside the pillar, that would get you some extra stone. It'll also look nice because it'll draw attention to where the tension needs to be drawn to. Sure. So I like, agree with like, you. Like, um, She's happy, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be aesthetically pleasing. I'm great with that. I'm, I'm, I'm great with that. Um, and it'll give you some little extra stone without spending it on seven feet tall over a door, because I don't think that's a wise choice at this point to go that high. And I, I like where we just come to the bottom of the windows, because then it's aesthetically all the way across. So, okay. Yep. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. I would. I think that would look nice. So the corrugated panel is that standing seam? Yes, it's, it's not down. corrugated. Yeah. Okay. And to Sorry, I anybody else got any comments to make? They did note that the windows basically come right to the three foot, so they may be within an inch or two of the sill stone. So you probably don't want to be. Um, I think it would look weird if you went up yeah. around the windows. You'd have to go up a little farther. You'd want to go up at least like an 8 or 10 inches just to get that separation. You're going to save on the sill stone in between each window, but, you know. You're going to have more, cuts, more money in cuts. And exactly. That. So. And I just, I don't know if it's going to add to it that much. Is the commission okay with Kelly's rock pulls here? And as far as the, I'll just end it real quick. As far as the um, the landscaping plan goes, I think that looks great. Um, I don't, I don't see any issues with it. Did you guys submit a monument for your? Did you didn't do a design or anything for that for the company name or anything? You're not really. Okay. I'll tell you straight forward. I'm real particular about it. So we built our Columbus building. I just started working there like three weeks ago. We still haven't done the monument sign just okay. because we wanted to see how everything okay. was done first and then we wanted to match okay. and, and just kind of blend in but have the graphics with it so we kind of waited at the end. Okay. And then the city will go back to that. Okay. And just approve it. Not a problem. But we wanted to just blend in. Figure it out. Be, it'll be very plain. Okay. And then one other thing before I'm done talking and I'll. I'll shut up. Um, the only thing that I suggested or I was thinking maybe we should talk about would be the number two about the number of trucks and trailers. I am fine with the number of trucks and trailers. I just believe that yes to eliminate any um, junkyard storage. Maybe we do keep it to inoperable or unlicensed vehicles of any kind or trailers. Um, shall not stay on the sites more than 14 days. Gives them some time to get rid of it, move it, fix it, whatever. So, um, the only thing I have on that is I want Britain to have those four posts that hang on the back of the trailers. Yeah. And I do park those on site so they'll park in like a parking stall. 
but they're operable. Oh yeah, nothing broke. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, that, I'm not gonna keep jumping. You don't have any so I, I, That's I, what I'm saying. I just so maybe yeah, so leaving that, that in there, um, yeah. just to keep it so that there's not just dumping grounds to yeah, maybe to make great your great neighbors great. happy. Great with that. No problem. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. all I got. I'm good, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay, just to clarify then, uh, limiting the parking to 35 truck trailer combinations plus forklifts, uh, which must be parked in one of the stalls, or you could probably fit two or three in a stall. Um, so just to reiterate, uh, Ms. Perro's architectural um, comments, we're staying at three feet wainscot around the office and we're going to four on the warehouse parts or are we three all around? Three and four. Three and four plus then uh, some additional stone around the door. Mm -hmm. Straight back from the two front mm -hmm. pillars. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's, um, the only reason I suggest the three and the four, the difference between the three and the four is so that Yes, it stays under the windows on the office port, and then the four is high enough where it's got some attraction on the, 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 the main building part. There are those two columns separating at those locations, so they won't look like, oh, they forgot something. So there'll be a nice transition there. Okay, so Mr. Chair? Yes. So because we're not going to be quite, I don't think, well, we'll have to have... Uh, we're going to be under yeah, we'll be under slightly, I think. So we process a conditional use permit. Are you recommending that 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 they do that at council level? That would we have time to notice it, but it has to be a CUP for any variation from the material requirements. If you give me a minute, I can figure out what the difference will be. Pardon me. If you give me a bit of time, I can figure out what the difference will be. Oh, I don't know that it matters, okay. but I mean, I think it sounds like we all agree that what they're proposing is higher quality than regular sheet metal. The burden is on them to prove that um, the deviation is resulting in something that's desirable and that um, sticks with the intent of our ordinance. So that's what the consideration is, um, but there does have to be a public hearing, but we could do that at council if you want to make that part of the recommendation? That's fine. In other words, you were saying that the, uh, there has to be a public hearing at the city council meeting on, on this. That's, yes, that if they want to keep this all together and it's kind of on schedule because the plat is already going and then this would go at the same time then, so it would be one unified project. There's consensus of playing a zoning. Would you like to go this way? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. And uh, she said something about uh, uh, in operable unlicensed vehicles. That's already in there. We're leaving that in there, right? She proposed 14 days instead of seven. Instead of seven. Okay. You have a problem with that? I guess I'd rather stay at seven. I think if you have a truck that breaks down or something, a week is typically um, enough time to get it fixed. I don't the only know thing I have sometimes agree. with buy trucks, I don't license them for like 45 days to no crime, we'll get them oh. delivery. And they're, brand new. they're brand new trucks. I get, them, I get them in February, but I don't license them until we start driving them in April, so that would be the only stiff but they're all brand new trucks. I, I try to take delivery on my trucks like 60 days prior to actually need them, so then they park like I got a brand new truck, so in the yard, this is not for they're just don't legally they, don't have they just don't have tabs on the truck too, if that makes so any sense. Awesome. So that's the only thing that I can come up with that we might have an issue down the road is they're brand new trucks that just take delivery before we actually need them. Should we add some in for new vehicles? I mean we're gonna notice it's exception new for new new vehicles. Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah, we should add the condition just to be very clear that we would allow new vehicles up to 45 days unlicensed or something. If I could do 60, it'd be 60. great. That'd be great. 60 days unlicensed. I think that'd be okay. But brand new. When brand new? When you're brand new. Mr. Chair, 
Yes. So brand new and operable, obviously. Okay. Yep. I think the key point is to keep operable things around. You don't want to make a jump yeah. out of it. Nope. <laughs> is seven days enough to fix most of your trucks then if something does break down? Like getting parts Everything and Everything has stuff? license on it all. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned earlier that sometimes if a guy, you know, the ones that typically bring one home and then if they have to... Oh, they're still operable lights. They may need to do a brake job on it. They may need an oil change. So not completely. The only thing would be inoperable if it got in there. I'll say all of our equipment is five years or newer. Okay. We, we have one truck that's older and it's like a show truck. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have any issues with that. He does like, I mean, regular hauling with it and then he does shows and the only question I have, poles and only, only question I have is like if a truck gets into an accident, we had one this spring that got caught up in a cable underneath the bridge on the 35, and it took us forever to get parts. So the hood was smashed up, and I couldn't get parts in today's world. It took us almost 90 days to get parts in for something like that. So technically, it's not an operable. It's still licensed to go on the road, but I can't legally drive down the hood because the road because the mirrors ripped off from an accident and all that kind of stuff. And I just couldn't get parts. I, I know it's getting still four years old. But it's like I know it's hairs. Really, 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 really yeah. split hairs. So I don't know how hard you want me to. You know, I'm just being honest and truthful with everybody up front. You know, what is what is what's the split here? I, I understand where you guys are going, where you don't want junkyard out there. So, but as long as there's some work between us, if you guys come over there, you see a truck out an accident, we're waiting on parts to fix it. You know, I think that's pretty general. Say that most people would say, okay, yeah, I know you're fixing it. Just yeah, have to wait for parts to come in and stuff like that. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mayor. Just to clarify, would that be typically if you're waiting for that to be sitting out in the yard or is that something? Yeah, I put it out in the yard. That so one the only thing indoors is when you're working on it. Or when it's really cold, we'll park everything inside. We'll try to wiggle everything inside. So, like when it's super cold, like last year when it was really cold, we'll stuff it as tight as we can with everything. And then all the forklifts, once we get cold weather, all forklifts get parked inside every night. Because they don't start with the roof. Anything else that we need to cover Mr. Here? Chair, yeah, I would just say that, I mean, obviously this year's been unique. It's not typically a 90-day process to get a part, so. It's usually about 30 days as long as you get trucks in, fixed and repaired. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, typically if somebody like that were to call and say, hey, I've got trouble getting a part for this and just notify the city, um, you know, we would, we could, um, make an exception for whatever period of time, but we, I guess, yeah, it's. And to be honest, you'll never see it anyways, with an apple we had there, because you have a 10-foot fence and trucks all underneath that, so you wouldn't even see the damage, to be honest with you, back behind that. Probably the concern. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can put a six-foot fence in there, it would save me a ton of money. <laughs> um. Yeah, just require that it be behind the fence and maybe notify the city if it's more than more than the seven days or something. I'm great with that. I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. I'm a person that's good for jumps. You don't have to worry about the jumps. Okay. Does that Mr. take care of all the recommendations now? Mr. Chair? Yes, Mayor. Just, just to clarify, typically, I mean, that's an unusual situation. Well, this year's part is... You've, you've got something that... Got damage in the accident. Usually it's two weeks before, like we take a lot of stuff to Gator and Elk River for body shops. Usually it's about two weeks before they get in most body shops or back up anywhere from two to three weeks. This year it's just impossible to find parts of their rentals. But you're okay with just contacting the city and yep. hey, a couple of trucks get an accident and you're looking for parts. There's a few yeah, the few apartments. Yeah, so with, with that understood, it wouldn't be a big deal to contact no. the city. And, and that's you know obviously what these conditions are you know, to to make sure we've captured it clearly. So some future council down the road when the question comes up, it's it's clear now we, what we've agreed on. Mr. Chair, yeah. yes, I've got a question about the screening material or the screening fence. Mm -hmm. So it, is that a ten foot requirement for this? Uh, District for, for the uh, 
highway? No. They offered the 10 foot fence because they have the trucks and they're typically higher than the six feet. Um, so typically, I mean, we could ask for it, but they offered that up, which was nice along the street sides because that's what we're most concerned about is the views from um, the adjacent properties and the public rights of way. Okay. So I was just wondering about the uh, south side, since that's screened by trees now, if the neighbors were to cut the trees down, then the uh, trucks would be visible. Is that is it okay to rely on the neighbor's trees for screening? Uh, no, not typically. Uh, a six foot fence does meet our ordinance requirement for okay. screening. And that is also industrial zoning adjacent, which is helpful if it were residential, we would be requiring a different type of a buffer. Um, but there is an existing industrial use there. Any other questions? Seeing none, we, we can make uh, with uh, our planner's recommendations and the changes here, send, it, send this to the uh, city council then. Somebody would like to make a motion? I so move that we send this to the city council with the recommendations, including the things that we just discussed. Someone like to make a second? I'll second it. Mr. Jorgensen, second motion. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, just to clarify that you're asking for the conditional use permit to be at? At the city council. The city council? Okay. Yes, that's included. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, we'll go to the next item. Uh, Thank you. Is development concept uh, 20091 First Street. John, uh, John uh, Curtis has submitted his concept plan for the de development of four office industrial buildings on Lot 1, Block 1, Burnstown Center. Will the planner present what she has? Uh, Mr. Curtis is in attendance tonight. The as you know, owns another lot in our industrial park. He's looking for some additional storage area for himself as well as uh, potentially leasing some space. So he's got a 3.79 acre parcel in the very northeast corner of Burnstown Center Platte. Uh, it's adjacent to Nolan Boulevard and 201st Avenue. So when a concept plan is submitted there's no formal recommendation made uh, what the applicant is looking for is just any comments you might have on the layout of the site um, things you like or don't like or that don't conform as you saw in the um, memorandum from cgc he does need to add some additional parking and uh, we need, you know, verification that these individual drain fields will all work out. But he's showing uh, the buildings with offices on each end and then an, a warehouse area in the middle. I believe that there's plenty of space for truck movement. Uh, the warehouse office use, again, is a permitted use within industrial zoning districts. Uh, what he would need to process is a conditional use permit for multiple buildings on a single parcel. So because they're individual buildings, uh, that would require a conditional use permit. There's a requirement that they all be owned by the same um, property owner and controlled and maintained as, as one unit. Um, it is a bit unique of a site in that there's very large drainage and utility easements on there. These have been there since the, the um, development was platted. I believe Mr. Curtis has owned it as an industrial lot in its vacant state for probably a good five years. 
maybe even six. So if you have any comments or thoughts on the matter, please uh, you know share those with Mr. Curtis. Uh, I think there is a big need in now then. Now then has kind of a niche for attracting smaller startup type businesses and his desire to lease you know these buildings or part of a larger building. Um, to a small business is a, is a good thing. He's proposing, as I said in the memorandum, to have this look similar to his property on Iguana Street, which is that maroon themed uh, exterior. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Curtis, are you looking at a flat roof building or are you going to? No, it's good. Yeah. So you're going to have a similar design with the. It's going to be same colors, same kind, same, same colors, same bright. So the office smaller than the warehouse area, similar to? Uh, uh, it's probably going to be uh, 16 foot side walls, probably so same trust design. And basically, it's going to look like Overture Billings there now? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That looks beautiful. I don't know how many things by there, but uh, if you look at the way it's, it's got over there now, it looks really nice. You got any other things that you see here that you should suggest? Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, I'd just like to ask Mr. Curtis, are there going to be any windows on the, maybe that north 201st side? Might look nice if you had some upper clear store windows. Yeah, on the north yes. side. Yes. Just to break up that big blank wall. Yeah, I'm going to break up the wall and probably on the 201st side I'll probably have brick wall. Oh, okay. 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 Somewhere in the north. Same as that. And then I assume there's some office windows too on that, those two ends that face now then Boulevard. Yeah, I like lots of windows. Okay. On all three sides, both the uh, north side and the south and east and all that stuff. Okay. Yes. Mr. Curtis, the um, Mr. Curtis, the uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Is there anything that prohibits more office space from being developed or as far as the, the differentiation between office and warehouse? So uh, could a building turn into all office? Well, my latest thoughts were in the middle of the, well, our first one is creating an office in the middle uh, between those two uh, north buildings on the 21st side. And then maybe on the inside, I might do a common hallway for that for the bathroom. Okay. Because if that was all office space, it'd be require a lot more parking, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. That was so, be I mean, my is, comment. Is there anything in the permit as far as limiting the office space? No, just as long as the site can accommodate the parking. The parking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if I take, so if we look at the east side there on. The, Five. Those trees there, we, we still can add parking on that east side of the okay. seven or eight spaces. Or do we actually need the parking spots next to the office or, or not? You could also have some parking along here. Yeah. I, I, those are just some big garage doors there for access. I don't worry. I want to kind of keep that a true way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it looks like I've got lots of space for additional parking if I have to. Yeah, it looks like seven or eight more possibly here. 
you could re you know yeah you could reconfigure this whole end if you really wanted to. Any other immediate thoughts before we move on to our next? Mr. Chair, yes. Question for me. Do you have a do you have a, a plan to have large trucks in there to access the doors? The warehouse, kind of large trucks you're talking about. Uh, semi trailers. And no. Do I have access? Yeah, we've got Because yeah. we'll get loading and unloading with, with typical uh, truck and trailers to, for loading and unloading, which, which will utilize forklifts to unload it. They're going to be in and out, but they're not going to be uh, staying there. I was wondering if we had one truck back up to each building that would block the aisle. Which aisle? If the, the main. Road would be blocked if you had a truck going to each building back up. get two trucks in there. there there's you enough. Just, you would just cheat to one, one side for unloading versus down the so There's enough space. Lots of space. That's somewhat to scale. Those buildings are 48 foot wide. So if you look at the space between them, knowing that the buildings are 48 feet wide, I don't know the numbers, but they're probably about 60 feet there. Width of the parking lot. Which is more than enough. I'll talk to this guy. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mayor. Oh, why is the chair? Are you taking comments from the floor other than from the applicant? Pardon me? Are you taking comments from the floor other than from the applicant? No, I don't believe so at this time. Mr. Chair? Yes. Since it's a concept review, would it be probably be helpful to take comments of anybody who was, was here? On the floor. It's your, your call, but. Uh, yeah, go ahead. She's from the council, so. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, council Member Randall, I'm just wondering, looking at this and not having dimensions, um, public safety vehicle access, um, it has back been thought about in this layout. There should be another thing. Well, I just want to be sure. Yeah. It looks like to scale. Yeah, this is good. I think it's solved. Looks like there's plenty of room there, right? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah. Lanner Stockman, you would know what we've, we've been through this with all the fire trucks. I mean, do we have enough room to? To get in and get out if we needed to? Well, I think it's questionable. We have to be sure that a truck can turn around on site so he can't be backing to or from the street. That, that entrance uh, coming in is 40 feet wide. Okay, well, we have, that's fine. I, I think, you know, Center. and maybe there can be a turnaround at this end or something too, but just so they're not backing in and out. Uh, the semis mostly. Would, would be an issue. But. Mr. Chair, that was, that was my concern with the uh, having trucks in there, as if a fire truck could get through there. When, if there was two trucks lo unloading and loading at the same time, one could get to the back building. If you look at everything in your industrial park, it's got that kind of space. Yeah, it looks like a lot of space. Yeah, it's not. Mr. Chair? That was me. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I would just recommend that you have your engineer or your surveyor show the, you know, some sample trucks on there. Just show Go turning ahead. radius. And then the, this parking area, well, I think I indicated the drive aisle widths have to be 22 feet. So the parking here that's adjacent to Ferret is maybe a little questionable, but... Uh, I, I may shorten those buildings, and I think, when is that? That was 152. 158. 154, right? I may shorten them by 12 feet. 
Uh, oh, okay. One, mm -hmm. um, I guess this is a concept one, but after I gave it to Liz and went through the thought and looking at it, I may shorten them up to provide more, just a little more room on, on parking. Okay, good to know. Are you okay with this? Any other thoughts? I have a question. Oh. Just because I'm curious. I'm sorry. Uh, um, so the septic, when you look at laying out the septic, do or, so how does that work as far as like do you get soil testing prior to the concept plan or is that something after and then it's according to these rules that are set to Right, he would have now move forward and have soil borings done. Okay. And a designer would take a look at the at the, at the layout. Right. Okay. All right. So I think we had to dictate the occupancy to dictate the subject for the trailer and tanks. Okay. So that's determined by you came up with a number of today or the other day. Oh, I don't remember. As far as uh, the square footage. Square footage of office, square footage of store. And Bathrooms. With, is each office going to have its own bathroom? Yeah. Well, well, the two on the ends will, and they put one in the middle of the hallway as a common one. So there'd be probably finalized three three bathrooms per building. That will then be the building. Any final thoughts? She's saying that we'll go wait for the next step then. Okay. Okay. And I think that includes everything, doesn't it? That concludes our planning and zoning meeting. No, all we need is a motion for adjourn adjourn I'll make a motion we adjourn the meeting. Commissioner Jorgensen made the motion to adjourn. So somebody Second. can motion. Commissioner mm -hmm. uh, I think your name is straight here. Hapalon. Hapalon. Yes. Made the second. Is there any? Well, let's vote on it. All in favor say aye. 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 Sorry, I got mixed up in your name. He's new. His name is different. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.